Hello and welcome back to Cinematic Venom and happy Mother's Day! Now you've already met my lovely mother, my darling aunt. So this year you're going to meet my grandmother, Liz. What's up my bitches? <sighs> Beth is in the house. So what do you think of Dumbo? A charming story. Dumbo is an ungrateful little shit who left his mother a fucking worried mess. Dumbo tells the story of a baby elephant delivered by a stork, but it turns out he has a rather odd deficiency. <laughs> Teased by the other animals, Dumbo's mother completely loses it, forcing her to be locked up for safety. Yeah, be thankful you didn't get shot. During her absence, the baby is used in the circus and ridiculed, before learning that she can use those ears to fly, gaining some huge fame and finally reuniting with mother at the end. When you think about it, isn't it the exact same plot as Pinocchio? A new creature shows up with a strange abnormality, people tease them for it, they get separated from their parent, used as a freak in the circus as they're led by a small companion who guides them along the right path before using their issue to come out on top before becoming a success and reuniting with the parent at the end. It's the exact same story. I mean, some have also said that it's like Rudolph, but I think it's closer to Pinocchio. But not as good. I want to sit on his woody nose. Certainly not! The film was based on the short children's story by Helen Aberson and originally only had eight drawings, hardly any dialogue, and Red Robin was Dumbo's sidekick instead of Timothy Mouse. Walt Disney discovered the story in 1939, but originally wasn't too keen on adapting it. Storyman Joe Grant and Dick Humor. <laughs> Climax! <laughs> Come on! A pyramid of elephants are standing in a ring, waiting for a climax! <laughs> Okay, we just keep going. What's the matter with you? Wrote up treatments of the film and left them on Disney's desk each morning, eventually winning him round to purchase the rights. A good thing too, because this would be Walt Disney's favorite film made by his studio. However, he didn't think a short would do it justice and decided to make it feature length. Unfortunately, the Disney studio was struggling as Pinocchio and Fantasia had both flopped at the box office. So Dumbo was low budget and they hoped it would bring them some cash back and the script wasn't changed particularly much from the first draft of the screenplay. Many voice actors didn't receive a screen credit but did return from other Disney projects. So if you're keeping track at home, one of the elephants was Verna Felton aka the fairy godmother from Cinderella, the queen of hearts in Alice in Wonderland and one of the three good fairies in Sleeping Beauty. Sterling Holloway was the stork aka Winnie the Pooh, the Cheshire Cat and Car the Snake. Cliff Edwards was the leader of the crows aka Jiminy Cricket and John McLeish, Goofy himself and was the opening narrator. We may have had a lot of hard luck up till now. Production began in 1941 and was kept simple and cheap so it lacked the detail of the previously mentioned films as well as Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. They didn't focus on the small details of the characters' animations or the backgrounds as much as usual, but the production was put on hold on May the 29th, 1941, when the entire Disney Studio staff went on strike, which lasted five weeks. There was some conflict with Walt Disney being asked to sign with a particular union, which he refused. And after the strike ended, the family atmosphere that was always praised at the studio in the past was no longer present. After production wrapped, Arch KO Radio Pictures, who were distributing the movie, hated the film's 64 minute running time, demanding that Disney either make it longer or edit it down to a short film length instead. But he refused, and the movie was released on October the 23rd, 1941, and became the most successful Disney film of the entire decade. It cost a mere $950,000 to produce, which is half the amount of Snow White, and it ended up grossing $1.6 million being re-released as late as 1976 to worldwide positive reviews. It picked up an Academy Award for Best Musical Score and the Best Animation Design at the Cannes Film Festival, and Time even listed it as one of the 25 best animated movies in cinema history. But much like other classics, controversy arose as people found the Crow characters to be racist as they are depicted with strong, heavy black gangster accents, one of which was played by the Caucasian Cliff Edwards, though the others were voiced by the African-American Hall Johnson Choir. Oh, look at here, look at here. My, my. Why, this is most irregular. Well, I just can't believe my eyes. They ain't dead, is they? No, dead people don't snow. Others disputed these racism claims, however, including Whoopi Goldberg, who loves them and wanted them to be merchandised by Disney a lot more. Me personally, I don't consider it racist for a white person to voice a person of color. Simpsons did it for years and nobody called them out on being racist, although well, eventually that, that's a bad example. But they never came across as racist to me. 
However, later on in the film, We work all day, we work all night, we never learn to read or write, we're happy, hearted, how's the bounce? This is why I had Dinah killed. You can't say that! Nah, nah, that's ridiculous. I mean, look at this. This is inexcusable. Every single man depicted as a slave is black. There is not a single Caucasian worker here. And they're all shown later in the film running the joint. No wonder this is Walt Disney's favorite film, The Racist Prick. The animation, to be fair, doesn't actually look rushed at all. It's still as charming as ever, but I think the main issue I have with this film is I just don't think it works as a feature. I mean, Walt Disney claimed they had too much story to keep it as a short, but how? The movie has a lot of filler. There is enough of a premise here, but they don't really develop it all that well. I mean, if you take out the stupid elephant dream sequence thing, this film would be less than an hour. They needed filler just to make it feature length. Although Leonard Moulton claims that this is one of his favourite films and he even stated that that same dream sequence is one of the most original and interesting scenes ever put to film. I mean visually yeah but it's completely pointless it doesn't do anything. I can't wait for Andrew and my good Paul Jimmy Seville to hijack another school. My family has issues. Why? I ask you, why? I mean, I'll credit the film for having the balls to actually make Dumbo get drunk. Yeah, some of the circus folk accidentally drop champagne into a bucket of water. He drinks it and him and his buddy go on a trippy adventure. It's kind of funny. At first. But the sequence just goes on and on and on. It's completely pointless. There's no purpose whatsoever. Just because something is original doesn't automatically make it good. I mean, for the love of... Well, fuck my ass and call me Judy. It's just pointless and weird! Also, this means that Dumbo flew whilst drunk. Not a very positive role model, I have to say. We don't care. I will freely admit that Dumbo himself is actually downright adorable. There's a really sweet scene where they visit their mother who cradles them from inside the cage. It really works and makes you feel, and it is an emotional sequence. And it's another great message where Dumbo is a huge hit, but they're still miserable missing their mum. It's simple but effective. Like Philip in the bedroom. Although, you can't sit on a cloud. Nor can you put anything on it. I don't care if it slowly sinks through. This isn't how clouds work. I'm starting to think Dumbo isn't really scientifically accurate. Why doesn't it come to the point? But I've always wondered. The film starts with the storks dropping off all of the baby animals and that's it. But for some particular reason, Dumbo's mum has to actually sign for hers. Why is she any different? Happy birthday, dear Jumbo Junior. But it's not his birthday. He's literally just been born, you dumb fuck. No, 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 no. The day you're born isn't your first birthday, because then when you're a year old, it would be your second birthday. You'd be two. No, no, he's born. It's his birthday. No, it's not how that works. It's his you, fucking you don't birthday. get born and everyone's, oh, he happy birthday. He was just born. No, your first birthday Listen is here. just that. He's your birthday. Was you don't born. have a so birthday when you're born. Just because it's your birthday. birthday. This has gone far enough. Also, why does this guy sing for Dumbo's birth, but not the others? Was every other stork a complete Grinch? In fact, on top of the blatant racism, the film does actually come across as really mean-spirited. I mean, Pinocchio at least had some companions, but this film has every single animal besides his tiny friend talk to him like dirt. And I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure elephants wouldn't act this way and completely neglect one of their own kind. Completely unrealistic. Kids even tease Dumbo, which is a really stupid move considering how dangerous elephants can be. Especially this one, I'm just saying. Out of my way, assassin! He's an assassin. For... Messing up a circus trick. From now on, he is no longer an elephant. So what the hell is he, a dolphin? You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. A bunch of big guys like you, picking on a poor little orphan like him. Well, he's not an orphan though, is he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this would have cut out the electricity of the entire town. Thanks, Dumbo, you inconsiderate douche. The rest of the film, yeah, it does seem pretty rushed. Because they just throw all of this filler, then suddenly he learns to fly. Huge success, the end. There was easily enough here to make a longer story, but they just played it safe, cut corners, padded out time, and it just came out really mediocre. A TV series spanned in the 1980s based on Dumbo Circus, but Dumbo actually speaks on the show, Tom and Jerry style. Many video games followed, a theme park ride, and a 
sequel was even considered in 2001, directed by Robert C. Ramirez. The plot would have had Dumbo and his friends being left behind by the circus and having to navigate a large city. And it would even have to explain what happened to Dumbo's father. Good, because I really wondered about that when I was watching this film. I was like, but what about his dad? What did his dad do? Deadbeat. Deadbeat, probably out gambling in Las Vegas. It was going to be set just one day after the first movie ended, but John Lasseter soon became CCO of Walt Disney Animation Studios and cancelled the sequel completely. Which is weird because he admitted that Dumbo is actually his favourite film, so why wouldn't he want to make a sequel to it? And then Tim Burton would end up remaking it in live action, but that movie's for another time. The original does have touching moments, but it also has dark imagery, awesome music, and blatant racism. A lot of filler and nonsensical padding, so I think the movie is okay. Make of that what you will. Ah, <sighs> so what should we do for Mother's Day, Nan? Let's go cut Charles Briggs and then poop on him all. I am... Um... Prince Andrew did nothing wrong. Okay. I might put myself up for adoption.